Zealand Striblet. I am a wildlife biologist, an angler, and a educator, and also a stand-up comedian. Who, el who else am I? I don't know, I love cookies. The next comedian coming to the stage is a wildlife biologist. Give it up for Elin Stribling! I will say, I, I grew up here in Denver, I grew up in Colorado, and uh, this, Denver's really special, Colorado's really special, because this is one of the little places where I've seen people like, white people like blackout drunk, like hammered blackout drunk but still carry around a Nalgene bottle full of water, you know? <laughs> like it has a bunch of stickers of 14ers you climbed. <laughs> uh, my grandfather was a wildlife biologist, um, and he sort of sparked that passion in me about natural resources and wildlife management, and um, just like a, an amazement and an awe for anything dirty and outdoors and wild. Like, this is my my meditation zone. I get to sort of just practice my cast and laugh at myself and talk to myself and just sort of be at one with my dog and, and, and the sounds of the river. We have too much plastic in the ocean, we have to get rid of the Kardashians, um, how I would fight for the Thunberg. What else? I mean, I have David Attenborough is the white Morgan Freeman. Bigfoot's carbon footprint. <laughs> when people drive around trying to find him and he's just a black man in the woods trying to go to work and white people keep bothering him. It's tough, especially with climate change, because you say climate change and half the country's like, Nope, I don't want to talk about this. It's tough, but it's like fun. It's like, how do I poke people, but also say, hey, join me on this idea. Let's have fun, but let's also try to fix it. Have you guys heard of Greta Thunberg? Have you guys, make some noise if you heard of Greta Thunberg. Yeah, Greta Thunberg. I have, a, I have a cousin, her name is Ghetto Thunberg. Um, <laughs> she's, a, she's a crip. Uh, she's a cat member. <laughs> And I told her, we had the conversation, I told her, I was like, hey, do you know, like, you know, sea levels are rising? And she was like, hell yeah, New York does. Um, <laughs> I jokes about gang violence. Not a lot of people are going to get that. <laughs> Something I learned from sort of fishing and comedy and how those things can be related. It's something that you do where you can't give up easily. I mean, it's already against you. So I think you just have to like keep trying new flies, new water, new techniques, and keep learning. Same thing with comedy. If, if the crowd doesn't laugh at your joke, you're not just gonna walk off stage. You have to figure out how to make it funny or why it wasn't funny. And I think it's the same with climate change solutions where there's not one thing that is going to solve every problem. But I think as, a, as people, I think if we just keep trying different solutions and it's always this idea of like you can't just give up if it doesn't work because it's worth fighting for. Climate change, especially here in Colorado, um, is affecting our fish populations because Trout need cold water. When cold water has more oxygen in it, trout need food and trout need shelter. If they have all those three things consistently, you'll have some happy fish that can spawn and can be easily caught, hopefully. But climate change is sort of affecting how trout survive because as the rivers drop, as the lakes drop, there's only so much space that a fish can sort of feel safe from predators, osprey, bald eagles. Um, as well as they run out of oxygen. Climate change is also affecting how they feed. Some of the cooler days, we give really cool caddis hatches or really cool midge hatches or bluing olives, and they're covering the water and the fish are happy and the insects are happy. But as we sort of get these hotter days, there's less of those events. So it sort of just becomes like a everlasting domino effect of 
less water, less oxygen, less food, less fish. I study animals, okay? I study the environment. I, I talk about animals, I teach it. Uh, and I just read this research article, research article that said that white people are going extinct. Have you seen this? There's a scientific article that says every year there's less and less white people and one day we're gonna run out of white people. And as someone who cares about the environment, I'm like, yo, I think we have to save the white people. You know, like I, I, it went a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. It was fun. I was out there and I was like, well, <laughs> it's gonna happen. The climate, any of the climate change stuff, that was the first time I said any of that. So, I thought it worked great. Would you, did you think it went well? I, I, I think it was the best that's ever been. Okay. Yeah, well, having the opportunity to show people or have people go fishing or go climbing or go. Um, backpacking or sort of pushing people to enjoy nature they can connect to it with something that's it sort of extends what their definition of the outdoors is and then that becomes a part of them and then they want to protect it right so today we're going to be using dry flies which are going to look like grasshoppers or beetles or ants uh, we're going to be using nymphs which just look like tiny aquatic insects that haven't quite like grown up to fly away yet um, and then we're also going to be using some streamers to try to get the bass the green sunfish. Do you see the green sunfish? <laughs> green sunfish, right. I've seen beautiful rivers and I've seen beautiful landscapes so I'm like, if, if someone ever talks about damming this river or if someone talks about blowing dynamo up on this rock or mountain to build something, it's like, I've seen that i've seen people connected to it i've experienced that i i don't want to lose that sort of selfishly and i would hope that other people who have also experienced that don't want to lose that i think by sort of pushing different people and, and encouraging people to go out and experience something new especially in outdoor and nature and then making sure that's a safe space for them so they feel a part of it then people are more inclined to be like oh i'm going to protect that river if it comes up on the ballot or if they see trash, they're like, you know, I'm just gonna pick this up because I don't want to see my space, this area, destroyed or trashed. I am the very proud mother of Elon Thomas Stribling. Um, we've just never actually gone fishing before. Yeah, no, because bugs and and sun and all of that. I think it's just cool that she gets to see me do something that I really love. She made a lot of sacrifices for me growing up. Yeah, I don't think she's gonna catch a fish, but. Oh, wait, wait, how do I bring it in? How do I bring it in? Oh my god! Oh, don't fall in! Oh. You gotta, you gotta hold it. I gotta hold it in my hand. Can I do them like this? Yeah. <laughs> I caught a fish in the water and it didn't sink. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> the big part of, especially fly fishing for me, is I get to exp not only take from these places. You know, sometimes it's fish, sometimes it's just an experience. Like it's also sort of hold guard of it and ensure that everyone else can experience it as, as good as it's supposed to be and protect it for others to use it. That's a good way to get people to vote is like, go experience it. And then you'll be like, that place is special to me. And even if I don't understand the science behind it or the ecological effects, I had a moment there and I don't want that to be wrong. I want my kids to go experience fly fishing on whatever river. <laughs>